Good day everyone, here we are again with the latest ASEAN news, still with me, Vanessa. Thailand lawmakers vote on seven options to change the constitution that affect to monarchy. Thailand lawmakers vote on seven options for ways to change the constitution, rejecting a proposal that opened the way for discussion of King Mahavajila Longkorn's role and four other drafts. <laughs> The Seventh Amendment proposal has 212 votes, 209 votes were from the members of parliament, three from the senators. The votes did not reach the 366 required threshold. <laughs> Mass protests on the street of Bangkok began in July with demands for the removal of Prime Minister Prayut chan -ocha, a former junta leader, changes to the constitution and curbs on the powers of the king. Two proposals are adopted that will allow for discussion of constitutional change without affecting the monarchy. The draft proposal by right groups law in the name of the Thailand people failed to reach the required threshold. The vote not a surprise. Prime Minister Prayut chan Ocha's supporters have a majority in parliament, where the entire upper house senate was appointed by the junta Hilet after a 2014 coup until a disputed election last year. The government arranged free parking area near Kwai Chung Container Port Terminal. Drone footage shows hundreds of parked tour buses are collecting dust at a northern Hong Kong container port, having been off the road for 10 months since authorities banned non-residents' arrival in the city due to the new coronavirus. The program was introduced in June and renewed in September, but the Hong Kong government has ruled out an extension beyond the end of November, citing the highest cost, leaving many tourism-dependent businesses on the brink of collapse, unable to find other revenue sources and unable to pay wages. Uh, without a single penny income, like this uh, cross-border bus, every day they operate, they have cash, every day income, but they stop for so long without money. So the driver definitely have no, no job to do. So they, 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 they don't have uh, any uh, opportunity to, to, to take the passenger. So in such a case, my company, like other company, of course, look for the subsidy from the government. Once the government subsidy stop, we need to swim down all the expenses, keep as small as possible. According to the government figures, visitor arrivals have been down 96% to 99% year on year every month since February. A travel bubble with Singapore allowing a limited number of people to move between the cities after being tested for the virus. The government limits daily flight only to 100 passengers each way, which set its own record in January 2019 with 6.8 million visitors, including 5.5 million from mainland China. For people in our two famous cities and for travelers all around the world, this is a significant milestone. It shows that with mutual trust and with the right arrangements in place, it is once again possible to safely travel overseas and it shows the way to a new era of post-pandemic travel. Tour guide Mimi Chung says she is pessimistic about the travel bubble due to the limits number of people, strict regulations and high cost, around $2,000 Hong Kong for mandatory virus tests plus around $6,000 Hong Kong to buy a tour in either city. The government should open the mainland border. Under safe conditions, it will bring some hope. Anti-government protest last year discouraged tourists leaving many operators without cash, buffers to weather this year crisis. Premier encourages further cooperation in development to toward COVID-19. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang calls for solidarity, focus on development and expand cooperation to join hands in countering the challenges amid the ravaging COVID-19. Li addresses the virtually held 15th East Asia Summit, chaired by Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc. Hailing the balanced efforts of the summit over the past 15 years in advancing political and security cooperation as well as economic and social development, the Premier made three proposals in terms of crisis response and cooperation facilitation. Li calls for solidarity in fighting the pandemic and improving the public health capacity, urging greater contribution of the summit in promoting vaccine accessibility and affordability. The Premier calls on all parties to engage in pragmatic cooperation to enhance the capacity of sustainable development, pledging China's further efforts in climate change, anti-terrorism, cybersecurity and other areas of cooperation.
Li says China is firmly resolved in safeguarding the region's peace and stability, vowing China's endeavor in upholding the rule of law on the international stage and working with the ASEAN countries to fully and effectively implement the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea and a steadily advance of the Code of Conduct consultations. The meeting also attempted by the leaders of 10 ASEAN countries and Russian President Vladimir Putin, President of the Republic of Korea Moon Jae-in, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, India's External Affairs Minister S. Jaya Shankar, and U.S. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. COVID-19 disease affects half a million in Indonesia's capital Jakarta. Indonesia hit a grim milestone in surpassing more than half a million cases of the coronavirus as stores remain shuttered and markets continue to experience minimal footfall. In the capital Jakarta, where relative loose social restrictions will remain in place until December 6, some met the milestone with glum resignation. The government isn't serious and the people are getting fatigued with the COVID-19. It's bad for me as a trader because there are less people in the market. The local resident says they still worry to take coronavirus vaccine because it needs long time to develop. It can give risk to the human being. At this point, I'm still worried to take the vaccine. As far as I know, it takes a long time to develop a vaccine and require a lot of tests. I'm worried there'll be a risk of side effect from the vaccine for humans. Indonesia now has 502,110 infections and 60,002 deaths from COVID-19, the highest numbers in Southeast Asia, and having struggled to contain the spread since its first case in March. Public health experts say shortfalls in testing and contact tracing and a consistently high positivity rate indicate the real numbers are likely to be significantly higher. Hong Kong and Singapore delays travel bubble for two weeks after Chinese report new coronavirus cases. Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Edward Yao, Edward Yao says at news conference that a travel bubble between Hong Kong and Singapore due to launch, will be postponed for two weeks after the Chinese-controlled city report a jump in daily coronavirus cases. But in the light of the recent upsurge of local cases, we have decided together with Singapore government that will defer the launching of the air travel bubble by two weeks. Now, under the um, agreed arrangement, we have got certain sort of mechanism and dialogue on this, but we decided in the interest of uh, making a good start and also in the, in the interest of avoiding any confusion to passengers. We have decided to put this back for two weeks. He adds, the travel bubble, which allows a limited number of passengers to fly both ways without having to go through quarantine, will be revisited in early December. The suspension comes as Hong Kong reports 43 new coronavirus cases, the highest daily toll in nearly three months. It is also facing more than 60 preliminary cases. The travel bubble arrangement people will allow traveling between the two cities without observing quarantine but must take a COVID-19 test before departure and upon arrival. There will be no restrictions on the purpose of the travel. Travelers also have to take designated flights with only Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines having been selected to operate these flights for now. Hungary plans to import Europe's first doses of Russia's toward Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine to Philippines for trials. Hungarian plans to conduct trials and possibly produce the Russian vaccine, an unprecedented step for an European member state adding to frictions with Brussels after the country block, the European Union budget and recovery fund plans alongside Poland. European Medicine Agency says under European rules, Sputnik V must be authorized by the European Medicines Agency before it can be marketed in any state of the 27 nations bloc. The import of Sputnik V vaccine is part of a plan that could lead to larger import and domestic mass production next year if the shot proves safe and effective. Hungarian experts will have the opportunity to study the vaccine in the forthcoming period and make a well-founded decision on potential usability and approval. The government did not respond to questions on whether it wants to license the Sputnik V vaccine at home or through the required European Union process. 
Sputnik 5 is suspected to be trialed and produced in other countries across the world beyond Russia, with Brazil, Mexico, the Philippines, and the United Arab Emirates among those who expresses an interest in the shot. Russia's Sovereign Wealth Fund says that interim trial results show Sputnik 5 is 92% effective at protecting people from the COVID-19 respiratory disease and the country is preparing for mass inoculations. Vaccines being developed by United States firms Moderna and Pfizer, the latter in the cooperation with Germany's BioNTech, have shown slightly better results on a much larger sample of people exposed to the virus. Asia-Pacific countries launch world's biggest free trade bloc with Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement are signs among 15 participating countries launching the world's biggest free trade bloc. The participating countries are the 10 member ASEAN countries of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations and China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc says at the signing ceremony held via video conference, the RCEP agreement will accelerate the building of the ASEAN economic community and thereby allow ASEAN to become dynamic and strong partners in promoting cooperation for shared prosperity. The 15 participating countries of the RCEP account for around 30% of the global population, global gross domestic product and global trade. The signing came after more than 30 rounds of the negotiations, which were launched in November 12, as well as a number of specific leaders and ministerial meetings between the participating countries. The ongoing 37th ASEAN summit and related summits take place from via video conferences. Founded in 1967, ASEAN groups are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Vietnam is the ASEAN chair for 2020. The infections of COVID-19 rising in South Korea since August. South Korea reported 313 new daily COVID-19 cases, the highest number since August. A cluster infections continue to emerge from offices, medical facilities and small gatherings, prompting authorities to tighten social distancing rules. Now we are at the crossroads of large-scale resurgence as we see the spread of infections in local communities considering that the effects of social distancing will only come in between 10 days to two weeks. We must make the effort now to prevent nationwide transmissions, including the greater Seoul area. According to the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, the daily tally has been above 200 for five consecutive days and surpassed 300 for the first time since August when there was a large outbreak at the church political rally. The government decides to impose stricter social distancing measures for the Greater Seoul area a month after easing them, warning of an even bigger crisis. Its current efforts failed to blunt spike in new cases. China, Russia and India will set up centers for coronavirus research and production within the BRICS framework. Russian President Vladimir Putin says at the 12th BRICS summit via video link, China, Russia and India are to set up COVID-19 vaccine research and production centers in joint efforts to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. Leaders of BRICS grouping Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa agreed to collaborate to fight against the COVID-19, said Putin. The leaders welcomed the recent billion-dollar loans from the BRICS New Development Bank, the institute founded in 2014, to mobilize resources for infrastructure and sustainable development projects in BRICS. In the current conditions, the work for the new development bank is in a great demand. The bank has reserved 10 billion US dollars to fight the pandemic, while the overall portfolio of investment projects currently exceeds 20 billion US dollars. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China will work closely with its BRICS partner on coronavirus vaccination. Chinese companies are now working with their Russian and Brazilian partners on phase 3 clinical trials of vaccines and they are also prepared to cooperate with partners in South Africa and India as well, she said at the 12th BRICS summit. BRICS is an acronym for five major emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, which together represent about 42% of the global population, 23% of global gross domestic product, 30% of world territory and 18% of global trade. 
various of anti-government protesters setting up mini table for pork grill barbecue in front of Thai police headquarters. Uh, anti-government protesters set up a small picnic for pork grill barbecue as a way to show that the protest has been peaceful enough to join a good meal. A lone man brought a set of barbecue pan and laid out groceries in front of the Thailand police headquarters where he was joined by another protesters and other onlookers. There is no implications from this. We just wanted to have a picnic, join the protest and meet friends. And this is something that we can do together. For those who are still at home, did not join the protest and think that there is a violence or that we are using violence on the authorities, I want to show them there is no violence. <laughs> Protesters have started a trend to eat pork grill, locally known as a mukata, at the demonstrations recently. The word mukata are part of the phrase to your highest majesty with rice, soup and barbecue pork, which used to give grace to the monarchy but mocks by the protesters. We hope you all enjoyed the news for today. Have a nice weekend and see you again.